two, three. Hey y'all, it's Betsy Goucher. So I'm going to do another fun tutorial for you. Y'all like my new haircut? I had it trimmed so now I have layers again and it feels so much healthier. Now, we're just doing eyes today. That's why the rest of my face is on with my majorly thick eyebrows, which as I said, I'm trying to grow them out so that way I can change the shape of them, see how I'm feeling. So let me know if you like the thicker eyebrow look or not. First things first, uh, as I said, I already did the basic part of my face, which is pretty much everything except for eyes. I used the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Foundation, which is absolutely beautiful on the skin in the color Soft Beige. Tarte Shape Tape in Light Sand. My RCMA powder that is in the Kat Von D translucent powder bottle. MAC Fix Plus. Hoola Quickie Contour. On my lips, I have the Too Faced Melted Matte, and this is the color Freshly Baked. This is from the Candy Johnson collection. I have the, over the top of that, I have the My Little Pony from Pure Cosmetic Glitter Gloss in Pinkie Pie. Um, for eyebrows, brow art, brown neutral taupe powder. I have the Coco Contour always. Uh, the Anastasia Glow Kit in Starburst and then the medium shade, that darker blush right here from the Ambient Light Collection. Now, what we're going to do is because the Pantone color of the year this year is Ultraviolet, which is absolutely gorgeous, which is what's on my shirt today. I picked this up at Bucky's this weekend. I love Bucky's. And if you've never been to Texas, if you ever come to Texas, go to Bucky's. I definitely recommend going to Bucky's. So what we're going to start off with first is we're going to, and what palette we're using today is one of my all-time favorites. I love Natasha Denona shadows. They are absolutely gorgeous. This is the Lila palette, Lila or Lila. And as you can see, these shades in here are absolutely stunning. And you can see I've dug a lot in here. I've never actually, to tell you the truth, I have so many different eyeshadows, I've never actually hit pan on any eyeshadow in my entire life. Typically, once I get out of using something, I give it away so someone else can get some use out of it. This palette is expensive, it is $129, but if you can get it at Sephora whenever they do their VIB sales, during the spring it's 15 and during the fall it's 20% off, it saves quite a bit. Um, I'm a firm believer and you get what you pay for and Natasha Denona are some of my absolute most favorite shadows. So to start off, I'm going to take my matte, my MAC Soft Ochre Paint Pot in Soft Ochre and go ahead and put that all over my eyes. My eyebrows still are growing out so they're going to be even bolder than this in a week or so. But we're having fun with it. There we go. Which I already had concealer and foundation on them. I can't not, if I do my foundation first, I can't not put foundation on my eyes. Like I don't know what it is. It's just a force of habit. Now I'm gonna take my RCMA powder, translucent powder. And the big fluffy brush, this is the Real Techniques Deluxe Concealer Brush, but I think I, I like a big fluffy brush like that to set the powder. I mean, not the powder, the paint pot. So, and I always like to set and do this step first because as you get older which i'm not like super old or anything like that but i'm older or at least back whenever i was a kid this is the age where i started thought people started really getting older which is 34 i'll be 35 this year but i was telling the girls earlier part of the reason why i'm doing my brows like this is i haven't not done my brows i started doing them getting them done when i was about 14. so i've had them done now for the last 15, 20 years, 20 years, 20 years. And 
back when I first started getting them done, this style was thin. So now it's thicker and I'm trying to get in that mindset of Let's thicken up the brows. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to find one of my blendy brushes. This is just one of the big soft crease brushes from the Tarte Make Believe collection. And I'm going to go into this color Nude Mauve as my transition shade. Because I'm going to go for more of a cool tone look. But as you can see how nicely pigmented these shadows are and they just go like a dream onto the eyes. Nothing beats a Natasha Denona shadow. Natasha Denona Viseart and Pat McGrath. Pat McGrath is one of my favorites because I like her kind of punk weird it's not really weird but it's kind of more punk more edgy aesthetic than just like your typical pretty packaging like i love Too Faced and stuff like that because i do love the cutesy little packaging which you know people say you get that Too Faced is geared more towards kids but i still love their packaging so as you can see, we've got that base color onto my crease area. Now we're going to deepen that color up with the shade Amara. This shade right here is called Amara. It's like a wineish shade. But we are going to do a, and this is, I'm putting it on my Morphe M507. Now we are going to do like a purple smoky eye. And you're really not supposed to match your shirt, your makeup to your clothes, but I don't care. I break the rules. There we go. Make sure that's all smoothly blended. Now I'm gonna take that original tart brush that I had and soften the edges. But one thing I like about the Natasha Denona shadows versus a lot of them is they blend like a dream. As you can see, I'm not putting a whole lot of effort into this and they don't get muddy. Dust away my little bit of fallout. And you, these are highly pigmented, so you will get some fallout from it. Now we're going to take, this is the brush that comes with the Anastasia palettes, and I'm going to take this flat, stubby end, it's like a shader brush, and I'm going to dip into the color Amethyst, which is this really pretty true purple, and it's more, this color right here, and it's more of a... It is a metallic, but, and we're going to focus that right on the outer V. And I do like playing with purples a lot because I have uh, hazel eyes, but they look green most of the time. So the purple really makes my color pop. But just slightly building. I don't want to go too heavy handed on this and end up looking like a clown. Because you can always build more onto your shadow, you cannot take it away. So it is better to add than it is to try to sit there and take the excess away. Now I'm going to take that blender brush one more time. And clean up the edges a little bit. I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but they look pretty. 
now we're gonna get into doing some fun stuff and I'm going to take the color magnetic magentic magentic or however you say that this really bright fuchsia shade and I'm going to take where is my Mac 242 or 248 Mac 248 one of my favorite all-time brushes I'm going to take and dampen that with my Mac fix plus and dip right into that magentic color and that's what we're going to do on the first part so it has like this purple pink gradient but see how nice and pigmented those are and if you like color don't be afraid to play with color don't let your age, like makeup is so much fun. And don't let your age sit there and decide what you will and will not do with makeup. Because my mother-in-law, I just recently got her back into wearing eyeshadow. She hasn't worn it in years because she's like, I'm too old for eyeshadow. I'm like, no one's too old for eyeshadow. And if you want to go bold, go bold. And I have more of an artsy personality. I like color. I'm not scared of color. Anybody who's watched my crafting videos knows that. So, and you might as well have some fun with it. You got one life and you don't want to be looking back saying, what if I didn't do this or what if I did this? But see how beautiful that is. Now I'm going to take my blender brush and just go and blend to make sure all my crease area looks nice and smooth. But I mean, it is that simple to get that much impact. Now I'm going to take my IT Cosmetics. This is just a small, fluffy, compact brush. And I'm going to go into the color Juno, which is like this silvery purple shade right here and it is a metallic, we are going to use that as our highlight shade. Focusing that mainly on that arch on that outer eyebrow. And then dragging it just slightly using just the edge of my brush like see how I'm just touching it lightly with the edge of my brush. Now I'm going to dig back into it and stamp that on the inner corner as my inner corner highlight. See how pretty that looks. And you can do this with any purple eyeshadow or really any eyeshadows that you feel comfortable with. I mean, this is part of the fun of this is being able to play. Now I'm going to go back into the dark purple shade called Amethyst with, this is a Luxie 2 2 1T. It's like a little liner smudgy brush um, to line the underside of my eyes. But for the Natasha Denona palettes, I have several of her five pan. I have the Sunset palette and then I also have the Star palette. As I said, these are some of my favorites to be able to play with. I'm going to take and dig into the color Layla. That's my dog's name. Right here, this dark brownish shade. And I'm gonna take that same brush, which I just dusted off on my color switch, and I'm going to use it just to stamp to tight line my upper lash line. As I've said before, I am partially blind, so so I don't use liquid liner in it because I have to be able to keep my eye open 
to be able to see what I'm doing. So I've never mastered liquid liner. But see, that just adds a little bit of depth. Now I'm going to take the all over shadow brush from Too Faced and I'm going to go back into that original shade that I used as my transition, which is the Nude Mauve, that light smoky purple, and just take and use that to blend out underneath my eye so there's no harsh lines. There we go. So, what do you think? You sound like simply, simply nail logical. So now the eyes are done, other than mascara and curling. So here's my 20 year old eyelash curler. Maybe not that old, but I've had it forever. One, two, three, four, five. And if you take and look at Natasha Denona's, like the Sunset Palette and the Star Palette, there are some gorgeous, they're almost like a pressed glitter shade, and those look absolutely phenomenal on. And I like that you can kind of mix and match all that fun kind of stuff. I'm going to take the Urban Decay Troublemaker. I love this brush. And with the troublemaker it says it's supposed to be like everything proof but it's not so if you're doing mac fix plus or anything like that i definitely recommend doing mascara after you do your fix plus but this wand gets in here to these lower lashes so well And I have, I'm not sure if they're considered thick or thin eyelashes, honestly. I like to wear false lashes, but that's kind of a personal preference of mine. Now I'm going to take the Dior Show Blackout Mascara. Love this brush for adding lots and lots of volume and length to the top lashes. Some people swear by this, other people do not. And if you see, I accidentally touched my head up here a little bit with the mascara, so I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to just brush it away. But look how much, if you look in the camera, I can see it in the camera lens, but how much thicker and more defined that is just with that little bit of mascara from the Dior show. It definitely makes a difference. And this color from the Candy Johnson collection is probably one of my favorite liquid lipsticks. And when you wear the matte liquid lipsticks by themselves, they also make your lips look fuller. Which I have pretty much a non-existent top lip. I have a pretty full bottom lip, but a pretty much non-existent top lip. There we go. Mascara's on. Now I'm going to take that brush that had the translucent powder and brush that away. There we go. Now my look is done. Mascara, all that's on. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below if you wanna see more tutorials like this. Um, you can check me out on Facebook. It's under Betsy Gotra. You can send me a friend request. Uh, you can check me out on Snapchat, which is under Betsy underscore go. 
Um, I'm on Instagram, but that's under Cutting Corners. I'm on Twitter at Go Betsy. Um, I'll try to leave the links in the description box down below. I can't thank you enough for all of y'all's support in my new adventure. Uh, so remember to go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down here. And also if you hit the little bell notification icon next to it, that will notify you when we post new videos, which are every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday is where my schedule's at right now. So thanks and y'all have a great day.